how to solve the dreaded thinner read problem with really cool semantic technology of event structures. Am I audible? Okay. Thank you, Scott, for your kind introduction and welcome you all to my talk. This is joint work with my advisor, Dr. Victor Papiadis. Shared memory concurrency is the perversive programming model for the multi-core architecture such as x86 power and ARM architectures. Now, based on the memory organizations, these architectures follow somewhat different memory models. However, there are one thing in common among these architectures. For the concurrent programs, they exhibit certain behaviors which cannot be explained by interleaving execution. In addition to this uh, complexity from these multi-core architectures, the compilers like GCC or LLVM also perform certain program transformations which cannot be uh, just uh, got rid of. Considering the effect of these multi-core architectures as well as the transformation of the compilers, the programming languages also introduce relaxed memory model and they provide a platform independent abstraction to program these uh, systems effectively and correctly. In this scenario, to understand the compiler correctness and reason about the correct program behaviors, it is important to formalize the programming language memory models. Before talking about the models of the language level, let's look at the requirement of a good memory model. The model should be strong enough for programmability. It should discard certain out of thin air or bogus executions and provide certain guarantees for well synchronized programs. On the other hand, the model should be weak enough to allow certain compiler transformations and efficient hardware mappings. Considering these conflicting requirements, coming up with such a good model is non-trivially challenging and this constitutes the motivation of our work. To demonstrate the difficulty of uh, designing such a model, let's look at two variants of a load buffering problems. Consider the first program. The X and Y variables are shared variables initialized to zero and the program has two threads. A and B are thread local variables in each thread. In the first thread, X is read in A and then Y is set value one. And in the second thread, Y is read in B and if B is non-zero, then X is set one. Then for this program, we ask that if A and B equal to one is possible as an execution. Now clearly no interleaving execution allows this behavior. However, consider that the access pair in the first thread are independent and then during compilation, a compiler may reorder these access pairs. And in that case, after that, there can be a possible interleaving execution, which can result A equal to B equal to one. So it is possible when y equal to one takes place first in the first thread, followed by an execution of the second thread where b reads the value one and then sets x equal to one. And in the first thread, x reads the value one and set it to a equal to one. Now let's look at the other program, which is a slight variant of this first program. So it differs from the first program just in the first thread. Here, X is read in A and only when A is non-zero, then Y is set one. Clearly, no hardware or any compiler transformation can change the program or execute it in such a way that A equal to B equal to one is possible. In fact, the only behavior possible in this program is both A and B equal to zero. Now let's look at how the uh, existing formalizations actually deal these two program behaviors. So the original C11 semantics, which is formalized by Batty et al, allows both these program behaviors. So this model is also weak enough not to provide any uh, data risk freedom guarantees. There are more restricted models like RC11 proposed by Laha et al, which restricts these behaviors in both programs. And then this has been a long-standing problem for the uh, concurrency semantics to come up with a precise analysis of these two program behaviors. And uh, recently there have been several approaches which addresses this problem. The most complete of them is the promising semantics proposed by Kang et al in 2000, 2017, which allows the behavior A equal to B equal to one for the first program and discard the behavior in the second program. 
the, the promising semantics is also complete in a sense that it comes with, with many results which are mechanized and it's a state of the art model. However, there are certain limitations in the promising semantics, unlike the other uh, existing approaches. Because of the setup of these semantics, there are, it is difficult for certain uh, properties to modify the semantics. Any small change may affect the entire uh, results, whatever has been achieved on these semantics. For example, the SC read write accesses are presently not supported in promising semantics. And if we want to incorporate these accesses, it is not very clear how to extend the promising semantics to allow such behaviors. Considering these, uh, all these existing approaches, we have come up with an alternative approach called weakest demo in this work, and where we actually precisely uh, reason about these program behaviors, which I have shown already, and this has certain flexibilities. Now we show that how we actually, our semantics works on a given concurrent program. So given a program, we come up with a consistent event structure. We come up with one or multiple event structure for a given program. So an event structure is a graph where the nodes uh, represents the events or the shared memory accesses in a uh, concurrent program. And there are certain relations among these events. And one uh, event structure may capture one or multiple executions in one event structure. And this event structure, when we come up, we uh, ensure that the event structure are consistent based on certain axiomatic rules. And once we come up with such an event structure, then in the next step, we can extract executions from this event structure. For example, here, for this given event structure, we can extract two executions. And then we check if the executions uh, follow certain consistency guarantees, in this case, C11 consistency. Once we find the set of uh, consistent execution extracted from the consistent event structure, the behaviors of these executions consist, the, consist, uh, creates the behavior of the entire program. Now, the question is, how do we come up with such an event structure for a given program? So, for a given program, we construct an event structure step by step by following the shared memory accesses in a program. At each step, we append one event and then we check whether the updated event structure is consistent. If the updated event structure is consistent, we accept it, otherwise we discard this event structure. For example, uh, we start with the initialization of these uh, variables x and y, and then we go to the first thread and create the load x0. So in this case, an event is a, a constitute of the memory operation, the memory location, and the value read or read in that particular operation. And note that there are certain relation among these events. The program order captures the syntactic order among the shared memory accesses in the program. And this justified from actually shows that how a, a read operation is justified from a write operation. So it pairs a write read uh, access, events pair. And this is actually justified from is a potential for a read from relation in an extracted execution in the future. Now we continue the event structure construction. So we create store y1 from y equal to one axis. And then in the second thread, we create load y1 accordingly. And then as b is non-zero, we create store x1. So now at this point, we see that in, the, in this case, this a equal to x axis can see an alternative value of x equal to one. So in this case, we create in conflict with load x0, another event, load x1 event. So intuitively, these two events cannot occur in a single execution at any time. These are alternative values read for a particular load operation. So once there is a conflict relation between the two events, any the program order successor events are also in conflict. So in this case, this load x1 operation event is in conflict with the store y1 event. Now, there is another point to note is that even if we add, have added an event load x1 here, this cannot be part of an execution. It is because it is effectively actually depending upon one of its conflicting event. So at this point, this event cannot be a part of any execution and it should not be observable to the other threads in the program. 
So we can keep adding events after program order successors here until we come up with another event store y1, which is effectively created from the same access y equal to one, has and have the same memory locations and the same value. In this case, we create an equal right relation among these two write operations. And the equal rights in combination with the justified from a read it creates the read from edges between the store y1 and the load y1. And then read from edges are also a potential candidate for read from edges in an extracted execution. Now, given this constructed, ex constructed event structure, we extract certain execution from this event structure. So for extracting the event structure, we take the conflict-free uh, subset of events from each of the threads, and then we preserve the program orders and create the read from edges or the justified from edges to create the read from edges in the execution. And then we check whether the extracted execution is C11 consistent. So in this case, this execution is C11 consistent and actually justifies the behavior A equal to B equal to one. So in addition to this uh, behavior, we can also extract another execution by selecting the other branch of the thread and we create an execution where A equal to zero and B equal to one is a possible outcome. Now let's go to the other example and see that how we actually discard the same behavior in this program. So in this program, similarly, we create the uh, initial uh, events and then we go to the first thread, create load x0, but we cannot proceed any further. And then we go to the second thread, create load y0, and we cannot proceed any further. So the only execution possible in this uh, extracted from this event structure is where a equal to b equal to zero. And thus we discard this outcome. So this is two simple examples where I have demonstrated the basic idea how event structure works. The details of the event structure construction, the consistency checking, execution extraction, its consistency are described in the paper. Based on this weakest demo model, we have uh, actually uh, captured the most of the C11 relevant memory accesses. Uh, and then we have tested this model into on the Java uh, causality test cases. And we have seen the expected behaviors on these test cases. Next, uh, our model provides the DRF guarantees for well-synchronized program by two theorems. The DRF-SC theorem says that for a given program, if the SC execution has races only on SC accesses, then the behaviors of, the, of a program on the, our model and the SC execution coincides. And the DRF-RA theorem for release acquire consistency says that if for a given program, if the RA consistent executions have races only on release acquire or stronger accesses, then the behavior of our model and the release acquire consistent model coincides. Then we have seen that our model is weak enough to provide certain desired program transformations. For example, we allow the reordering of independent shared memory accesses here, for example, the X and Y are independent locations, and there are two store operations on the, uh, the first one is a release operation and the second one is a relax operation. So our model allows to reorder this relax operation before the release operation. We also allow certain elimination transformations. For example, if there are two store operations, uh, then the first one is overwritten, then it is sound to eliminate these first store operations in our model. So in addition to that, we provide a certain correct mapping for x86 power and ARM v7 architectures. But uh, so far what we have proved is the suboptimal mapping. We are, uh, we are yet to prove the correctness of the most efficient mapping on these architectures. In addition to that, in our model, we have uh, compared the weakest demo model, our proposed formalizations, with the promising semantics. So, and we have found that these two semantics are incomparable. 
So we show that by two program behaviors, in one case, one behavior is possible, and in the other case, the other behavior is not possible. For example, consider this program. Here, uh, this is two threads, and we ask the question whether in this program, if a equal to 3, b equal to 2, and c equal to 1 is, is a possible outcome. So if we look properly, no architecture or no hardware actually allows this outcome. And we find that the only compiler transformation possible is to reorder this uh, read of y before this x, and we cannot perform any other non-compiler transformations. And none of these operations actually can allow this behavior. However, we observe that promising semantics allows such behavior. Now, that does not show that uh, actually the weakest MO is uh, weaker than promising semantics. In order to do that, we come up with a weaker version of weakest MO model, which we call weakest, by dropping certain consistency constraints from the event structure consistency checking. And then we show that the behaviors of the promising semantics is included in the weakest uh, semantics behavior. So this actually uh, relates to entirely two different types of semantics and to reason about uh, how they are related. Going back to the uh, comparison, we come up with another example, which is a slight variant of load buffering example. And here, actually, this uh, atomic uh, fetch and end operation is introduced between these two accesses. So in this case, we see that weakest MO allows this behavior, whereas promising semantics discards this, discard this outcome. So if we look closely, actually, there is a dependency from the read of x to the here in the second axis. However, this value of z is stored irrespective of whatever the value it is read. And then y is indeed actually has no dependence on the value of x. So in this program, it is the question is whether a equal to 1 and c equal to 1 is a possible outcome. So since we have seen that these two behaviors are actually for different programs in promising semantics and weakest demo has different results, these behaviors are incomparable. In addition to that, one another uh, interesting fact we observe about this program is that this behavior is allowed in the ARM v8.3 model which gives us a hint that probably it will be possible to efficiently compile the weakest demo model to the ARM v8.3 model. So this is our future work. Thank you for your attention. OK, I'll get us started with a slider question. Do you support the, quote, plain accesses from the promising semantics? So if I understand correctly, this is similar to the non-atomic accesses uh, in the C11. And uh, in that case, we allow these uh, plain accesses in our model. Any questions here? Um, a somewhat simpler explanation of the load buffering example using event structure would be simply to say that the read and the write should be in parallel because the hardware might execute them in any order. I was wondering if you had thought of using this as a modeling um, direction and if that would work or, or not. So putting the read and write event in parallel in the event structure directly instead of using your more complicated construction with the equal write. Uh, so basically, in the event structure, we try to model this uh, intuitively the way where the read and write operations are independent and whether they can be reordered. And that's why we have to come up with something where actually we can find that, but we are constructing step by step. So we, there is no other way we can actually capture that whether the, when the reordering happens, what is the effect of reordering of happening the write operation first and then the read operation. So in that case, we create an alternative branch and create one write, takes its effect into account, and then create the read operation in the alternative branches, if I have understood your question correctly. Any other So I wonder uh, 
if you can say anything about the relationship to Jean Pichon's operational but event structure model. So, yes, uh, actually we have discussed this in our paper in detail. Uh, we didn't have enough time to talk about it. So, uh, the model what is different from Pichot's model to our model is that our model is a kind of constructive and incremental where we construct the event structure and then we check if the event structure is, constru is consistent at each step and then we create executions. Whereas Pichot's model comes with and there is an event structure and then it refines the event structure to justify certain behavior. So this is the basic uh, difference how the two event structure actually differs in uh, treating the programs. So this one, right? So here actually create this. And then we create an equal right here. And which actually creates the read from to this combination of this equal right and this uh, justified from edge creates an read from. And then we can actually select this as an execution. Okay. That's all the time we have. So let's take a break here. Thank you.